James, tell us a little bit about Trout Lake, Washington and what brought you here. I came to Trout Lake, Washington after having a vision. I was living in Santa Cruz, California and uh, I was living right on the beach and I had several visions of earth changes that were getting ready to happen there. And uh, some of them have happened, like the San Francisco earthquake and I was on record giving the exact date and time and everything on that one. And uh, there's other events that haven't happened yet, such as some major tsunami activity and things of that nature. But after having the visions, I decided it was time to move and I kept seeing this beautiful mountain, Mount Adams, and uh, I saw a river on its eastern border, and then at the same time I saw a um, um, little mountain behind it, and I kept seeing the words little mountain, and I couldn't figure out what that was about, why there's this big majestic mountain in front of me, and that they focused on the little mountain. And I found out later it's on Little Mountain Road, is the name of the street that we're on. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So you've been talking on national radio about unidentified flying objects in this mm -hmm. area and yes. uh, I guess apparently also the Native Americans have also talked about that in this area. Tell us a little bit about that and some of the information you've received. There's a, a long long history of UFO activity in the area and there's a lot of people trying to debunk it and say there's not but the history is there. Uh, it goes back to Native American legends where there's beings that actually live inside the mountain and they're a very advanced culture of beings and they would take their sick or their wounded up there and they would be healed. And eventually they said they had to close that off because we were just getting too aggressive and too primitive on the earth and our technology was getting to a point where they broke off communications. But there's um, just a long, long history that goes back to the Native American lore, the forest rangers, the fire tower operators, the, the uh, police, the tribal police, uh, Dr. Jalen Hynek did research here, uh, David Akers, Greg Long, Bill Vogel, very prominent people in the UFO field have all been up here and, and have done a lot of research in the area and, and they've seen the ships and, and it's just, it's just, there's so much history, it's, it's just hard to deny. I don't know how anybody in their right mind could deny the long history of UFO activity in the area. Can you describe the type of extraterrestrial intelligence that is in this region? The the beings that we've had contact with here came to us only because we put about 10 years in of intense spiritual practices and process-oriented therapies and teaching uh, inner sensitivity training. So we are rising to the occasion. So the ones that we've been in contact with are very, very spiritually and technologically advanced beings. And they're the ones that are, are coming in now. They're usher, ushering in a whole new time. And it's part of our, of our destiny, you might say, to join the rest of the universe. It's in all the ancient prophecies. And the Native Americans call them the star nations. And they say that we are going to go through some, some traumatic times, some, some intense changes. And then after the changes, we'll be walking you know, right alongside of them. From someone in your position who's looking at life through a larger perspective, mm -hmm. how do you view the changing world that we're living in today with the economy, with the environmental changes, and the threat of a third world war? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's pretty insane. I, I think they defined insanity as, as doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. And uh, we keep thinking our leadership is going to take care of us and fix things. And, and each time they take us off in these crazy directions and it's all about greed and power and, and uh, has nothing to do with service to the people. And each time they give us a new leader and everybody gets behind them and each time they sell us out and we're back with the same old program. So as far as that's concerned, the political agenda, I think, we're in a sane, insane race because we do the same thing again and again, expecting a different result. The economy is totally unsustainable. And unfortunately, there's people that are in power right now. People have different names for them. They call them the Illuminati, the Gray Man. There's different names for them. And, and they're reaching their epic of greed right now. They're reaching the height of just pure greed, pure ego, pure selfishness and that's what we're seeing and that is a house of cards that's going to crumble 
And so, so that program or that economy that's based on competition and greed and, and uh, destroying the, you know, the environment and things of that nature, that whole system is, is going to fall on its face and it's, it's coming very soon. You talked about a lot of things that are coming soon in the future. Mm -hmm. What are those things and what's driving this change? I think what's driving this change is, is evolution, basically. And it's also grand cycles that we're moving into. And they're all lining up right now. So it's, there's so many different things going on. We are moving into the path of the galactic plane, which is a huge magnetic force. Um, our whole solar system is moving into a new place in the universe that's highly energized. So the planets are, all the planets actually are going through atmospheric changes and they're up to four times brighter. The leading edge of our heliosphere is glowing almost a thousand times brighter as we're moving into this new place. So it's, it's a grand cycle. It's the Mayans knew about it. Uh, the Native Americans have known about it. Um, it's, it's in almost every ancient culture knows about these grand cycles and uh, we're moving through some times of great change and I, I see that there's some people that are going to wake up and listen and move and flow with these changes and there's other people that are going to be asleep and get caught off guard because they've chosen not to listen and as an eternal soul that's how they've chosen this experience. Well, you mentioned something about the electric grid in 2009 mm -hmm. Um, do you still think that that's something that's likely to happen? Uh, at the end of 2009 up to 2010, there's going to be a lot of interruptions and eventually a total collapse of the electric grid. Um, anything that runs on a chip is not going to be functioning. And it's, it's just part of this solar cycle 24 that's revving up. And uh, I know they're trying to say that there's nothing happening with the sun right now, but we just had, you know, 119 degree weather in central California. Uh, you know, 20 degree climate changes almost instantaneously. We're having all kinds of strange and bizarre weather, and it's all due to this, these uh, changes that we're going through. So uh, it's just a matter of time uh, before the grid comes goes down but there are other alternative energies that aren't affected by these cycles and we need to bring those out the zero point energies and things are not affected by the magnetic disrupt disruptions and things so as in everything we have a choice uh, we can bring in the water technologies and run our cars on those or the magnetic motors we have all the technology we need to shift and change but the, there are powers that be that are withholding this technology and they want us to run these gas and diesel belching engines all the way up to the end. And, and it's just a matter of, of if the people rise up and just say, look, we're not going there anymore. We're tired of being, getting gouged. We're tired of being enslaved through dependency. And it's time to you know, start uh, operating as one you know, and working in the highest and best good of humanity on the earth. What kind of changes do you think that we're going to see in people, all types of people, as we get closer to 2012, as uh, things become more intense? I think the changes in people is going to be determined by their soul quality and, uh, and how much process-oriented uh, therapy, you might say, they've done or, or how much they've owned their stuff because all their stuff is going to come up. And so all the old wounds and traumas and wrong conclusions from past experiences are all going to be energized and they're going to be coming up and there's going to be a lot of projection, a lot of blaming going on, a lot of chaos, uh, a lot of warring uh, individually and collectively. But Relation, there's also relationships being Oh, definitely. Relationships are just yeah. going to be going like this. And uh, we have a choice, you know, we can, uh, a good example, let me go backtrack a little bit. In Stanford, they subjected monkeys to fluctuations in the magnetic fields. And they exhibited behavior, everything from comatose to self-mutilation. So we have a choice, though. We can override this spiritually. We don't have to be like monkeys. And we can heal and release our past and move forward and, uh, and clear this. Or we can just behave in a more primitive manner and, and, uh, and uh, do all this primitive barbaric behavior. And it's up to each individual. And, and it's up to people to go within when they're feeling this these energies coming up and own it and say these are my emotions these are my feelings 
and uh, and heal it. You know, ask for help. You know, we have the big eraser inside of us. You know, here people call it God, Creator, Spirit, whatever you want to call it. We can go within and ask for help and just say, help me to release this. And and there's legions of beings waiting to help us heal. We just have to initiate it because it can't go against free will. In terms of spiritual evolution, what are some of the things that are absolutely necessary that we take a closer look at at this time? I think as far as spiritual evolution, the one thing we need to realize is that everything came from one point and everything returns to one point. And what we do in between is really our own free will and choice. But ultimately, we're all one family and we came from the same source and we're on the same planet and we're sharing the same resources. And if we start operating under that under that consciousness, you might say a consciousness of oneness, we aren't going to have the problems that we're experiencing now and the lacks and the manufactured lacks that we're experiencing and all the other things. It's uh, We live on an abundant planet. We just have to learn how to share and, and, and get resources where they need to go. And there's really no problems as long as you get rid of this greed factor and this me consciousness and the selfishness. Uh, before we uh, in the interview, a quick qu couple questions about extraterrestrials from your perspective. Um, you mentioned the Pleiades, or the Pleiadians, mm -hmm. as far as the ones that you're in contact with. How many groups do you think are, or what do you think are the primary, primary groups, uh, primary groups that are operating today on the planet? Um, whether they're operating within government or mm -hmm. merely just communicating with individuals. Uh, boy, there's there's many many different groups here right now. There's probably several thousand groups, and uh, in the past, you know, we were at war. We're a very warring species, and and we had an opportunity to work with some very benevolent beings to turn things around, or we could work with these other beings that weren't so benevolent. And we made a choice to unfortunately on a government level to work with the not so benevolent ones and and, uh, and there was a trade for technology and genetics and human genetics and a lot of experimentation going on and that has a lot to do with what the group people call the greys and there's some other groups involved there too there's uh, so I'm not an authority on the reptilians I don't know too much about them I kind of keep them out of my space but uh, I'm sure they do exist I know there's underground bases where there's a lot of the this really pretty dark things going on but a lot of that's being phased out right now because the more benevolent ones are coming in and the benevolent ones that we've been working with there's an Orion Council of Light there's Andromedans there's Arcturians there's Pleiadians um, there's all kinds of different groups out there that are coming in right now but they they want us to rise to the occasion they don't want to come in and do everything for us because they know we gain wisdom through experience and if they take all the experiences away from us then we don't evolve and they also know we're eternal souls so so they have to operate under a little different rules and uh, we have to initiate the help you know we have to to in a way I don't like to say the word earn but we need to rise to the occasion and and make the right choices and choose to live in harmony with each other and the planet and choose help and ask for the help initiated and, and it, it'll come. But uh, that's kind of the protocols for working with the more benevolent races. So you look at more of the positive side instead of just the ones that are involved in the global conspiracy? Right. Yeah, we're working more with the more benevolent ones yeah. uh, and, and really by ushering them in and working with them, their very presence pushes the other ones out and they also provide a lot of protection and uh, but again we need to initiate that as a as a civilization we need to ask for help and and uh, and also kind of find that impeccable integrity within again and 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 really work in the highest and best good of humanity the earth and and we can turn this planet around uh, otherwise we're going to have a a grand spanking you know from mother nature because we've earned it Last question, if someone want to get started with a form of meditation or a form of uh, uh, a, a, a method of connecting with these beings, mm -hmm. how would you recommend they go about doing it the right, safe way, 
be it through psychic protection, affirmations, or otherwise? The, the book Reunion with Source has all this information that I wrote, and, and I always tell people it's very important to, before you even meditate, to learn to heal any unseen negative influences, because there's an old saying, just because you're dead doesn't mean you're enlightened, you know, so there's all kinds of beings in the astral levels. And so it's good to utilize these techniques, clear your space, and once you clear your space, then, and focus on that love and joy and bliss, uh, a Lama that I studied with, I love what he said, he said, there's so few enlightened beings on this planet, he said, because it's so damn simple. And he said, you have to focus on love and joy and bliss until you become it. And do it in nature, away from all the chaos and the, and the noise and the confusion. And uh, he said, that's, that's the path, and it's a very simple path. There's a lot of techniques, but the, the most powerful ones are the most simple. If you get into the big mental ones where you have to do all this elaborate stuff, that's still mental stuff. You know, it's just more like just staying in the moment, you know, focusing on the breath if you want, or focus on love and joy and bliss and just sit with it and keep bringing yourself back to that point. Just saying, just let it happen. It can happen naturally. It's the other exactly. stuff that just interferes with the channel. You know, there's the old saying, be still and know ye are God, because the God is within everyone. And that God point or that zero point or whatever you're going to call it, is within everyone. And that's what they're saying is be still, do your focus work, you know. And and, uh, and also, too, it's really important right now to, when you do your focus work, see your body how you want it to be. See it as young and youthful and vibrant and see the future that you want to experience and hold that focus and you can do that while you're walking you can do that while you're meditating and just you can create your own little mantras as you're walking and uh, you can walk right out of diseases and you can walk right into a different future if you want and it's, it's all about having the discipline and focusing on the love and the joy and the bliss and, and uh, creating a different reality is there anything else you can think of that could be added into that that I haven't asked? Or I, I think we've really got to keep our humor because <laughs> that's about the only thing we're going to have left through some of these experiences and, uh, and it's something that will carry you through and, and without the humor it uh, can be a very tragic experience you know but we have to realize that, that we're walking through this illusion as an eternal being and this is just one body of many garments that we've worn and just do the best we can while we're here and and if we make it we make it if we don't make it we'll be back you know not to worry about you know fear and death and all the other things because it's an illusion we always come back so it's a journey it's a journey and we chose to be here for this journey and these times and you know, great spirits don't do boring things. You know, we came here for these times. That's, that's why we incarnated.